Good morning, folks. We're doing a little lifestyle news this morning so we can see what goes into these shows each day. Let's start at spaceweathernews.com and zoom in on 193 angstroms. You can see that we don't have any major flashes or pops. Let's go ahead and let it reset once there. And we will go ahead and watch the full sequence through on spaceweathernews.com. It's the last 48 hours. And despite the fact that we've got two bright active regions, we don't really have a whole lot of activity on the sun. Coming back over here, uh, let's look at 304 angstroms to make sure there's no plasma ejections from the limb as well. Uh, in this 48-hour run, after the little uh, bit of the solar eclipse cuts over the top right portion, you can see things are really quite calm right now. Uh, no other major ejections as well. And I also wanted to point out that the next tiny coronal hole is also coming in right there. So let's zoom back out. Uh, let's go down here and confirm. You can see that solar flaring does remain on the decline. Uh, after hitting M class uh, status about four or five days ago and that is with these sunspots facing Earth now that they have decided uh, that they're going to be a bit more silent. Before we go and actually take a look at those sunspots since we're right here let's take a look at the solar wind as well. A um, lot of choppiness and missing data on ACE that has happened since one of the ground stations is now used to track discover. You can see in purple we have come down in the solar wind speed without a whole lot going on in the density now the phi angle has finally settled down after it was very, very jittery, and we actually uh, did have that uh, that geomagnetic storm right there, if I uh, can actually scroll the proper level across the page. You know, if this was 2011, we'd be expecting major solar flares with these sunspots, but it is not 2011, and the Earth facing quiet, first noticed by the Maunder husband and wife scientist team about the minimum 400 years ago, is back, leaving these sunspots unable to produce significant events, and while we expect that lead to get active as it departs, I'm monitoring delta development at the trailing sunspots in the second group. Couple quick news points. Two releases on Mars as we watch NASA's animation of its umbrella magnetism. First, they say that snowstorms are legit things on Mars. Instead of a 100% slow float down, they found blizzards with more than 20 kilometers per hour winds. Not expected. But perhaps what is expected was the other discovery that the Martian bow shock is closer to the planet at Aphelion and gets larger, farther away from the planet at Perihelion. When closer to the Sun, the planet's energetic interaction point, shockingly, intensifies. Up next, make it five major methane studies in a row, giving us less reason to be concerned about it. First, it was about the rate of release, then about the number of release sites, then the effect on actual temperatures, and then the secondary effect of greater CO2 uptake by the ecological factors. And now, they say that the last point of methane fear-mongering, the heat release trigger, doesn't work, and methane just doesn't care how warm the waters are. All right, we're over now at windy.com. You can see you've got the time bar down at the bottom. You have all of your tools over at the right. We have the pressure overlay on, and what we're going to be doing today is watching this low pressure system begin to move off. We're going to go ahead and pull up the rain overlay, and we'll move forward just a little bit over the next couple hours so you can actually see how that's moving along in its convergence line that swings to the south and then a little bit to the southwest uh, will be moving offshore as well. You can see the system churning in the gulf there. We'll keep our eyes on that one. So we'll come back to present time and we're going to jump across the Pacific because there is a typhoon that is battering Hong Kong as we speak. This is the one that danced right in between the Philippines and Taiwan. Let's go ahead and pull the rain one more time here. Hopefully you can see that just by using pressure and rain, uh, you can pretty much tell where the storms are settled and what's driving them to go where they are going to be going, as you can see down there on the timestamp. I'd like to also quickly come over to earth.nullschool.net to show you how to get some of those other cool little maps we show at the end of the frame of the news. When we click on the Earth button, that's all of our tools. I usually click P turn this into a nice little rectangle so we can see all of the globe. Uh, you know, you have your temperature, precipitable water, your pressure. If you want to go find the, the plant food overlay, that's CO2, it's under chem. You can see uh, the way it looks there. I usually click that button to turn off the animation. Go ahead and just play around. All of your tools are there under Earth, and if you click About right there, it'll tell you a little bit more about each of the overlays. Folks, the Disaster Prediction app is the fastest space weather alert system on Earth and the only app that delivers space weather health alerts. You can learn more about those alerts in the general Earth-Sun interplay in Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, available in PDF form, very affordable at otf.cells.com, 
which is also where you register for Observing the Frontier 2018. Catherine has embargoed further information until pre-registration ends and, well, defy the mommy of an infant at your own peril. Prices go up on September 16th. Get in now. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.